Hi guys, welcome back to episode 16 of the 1.19 Skyblock series. So I used my time between the episodes for another extended AFK session here at the Wondering Trader platform. Let's head over to the yeah, little pen to see what we got. Oh, by the way, the stubble fence set up here seems to do a really good job disconnecting the Wondering Trader and its Yamas. So the yeah, trader goes down here into the water stream, the Wondering Trader Yamas get dragged along. But their leads disconnect because the Yamas can't be pulled over the double fence. So this is working fine. Alright, uh, before we actually load the one traders anymore, we should really head over now. Okay, let's go down and run over. Okay, let's see what they have. So it seems like we have three wandering traders in total here. Okay, so first guy. Lilac. Didn't we get that before? Mm, I'm not entirely sure. I think I'm just gonna buy it. <laughs> it's also not a problem if you buy another two tall flower. Okay, then a fern. I remember getting this. Red mushroom, that's new. Okay. Um, what does it mean even? Not sure what we can do with red mushroom. We can of course grow large trees. Then red sand, I don't need to buy. Same for light blue dye and some packed ice. Okay, first warning trader. Second guy. Rose bush, that's definitely a too high flower we don't have yet. Then blue dye, lime dye, spruce saplings we have already, and more pack dyes. Okay, maybe the third guy has something we really want. Come on, oops, sapling, no. White tulip, nautilus shell. I think I have actually plenty of those now from AFK fishing. Pumpkin again, light gray dye, birch sapling that I already have, and gunpowder. Oof. Yeah, that was really underwhelming for AFKing that long. Hmm. Yep, I guess we have to come back here. There's actually also an advancement that keeps track how many items we already bought that are exclusive to the Wandering Trader. So 9 out of 25. Hope this is accurate. And there's a second one. Buy all types of tall flowers from the Wandering Trader. Okay, I'm pretty sure we already had lilac. But at least we have the rose bush as well now. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty disappointed right now. I was at least hoping for something good, like I was hoping for moss, um, maybe some pot soles. We have extra dirt blocks, a pointed dripstone, or of course the oak sapling. I actually need to work on a different Minecraft video for the next couple hours, so I could just run the game on the side and stand at the platform again. Maybe we have a little bit more luck, maybe we can get one or two wandering traders. Okay, let's see it. I actually have the feeling those are the exact same three guys we got earlier. Yeah, they haven't despawned yet. And we didn't get any Wandering Trader additionally. Well, it can happen. It takes about four hours on average to get one. And we didn't get one. Okay, let's do something else instead. There are a couple of other things we could work on. So we could continue with the pig breeding to work towards getting gold. Or we could try to improve the AFK fishing setup with the Skulk Sensor get a couple more enchanted books. But what's actually tempting the most to me right now is to already make a mob switch. So we no longer get into any dangerous situations with hostile mobs, because at this point, I really wouldn't want to lose, for example, my mending sword. This is really valuable right now, or the you know, diamond armor is also pretty nice. So I don't want to lose my gear anymore right now. Never cared too much about the levels we have or the, the wooden tools. But at this point, we have some good stuff that I don't want to lose at all. Um, so that's why mob switch. Um, the only option that we really have right now is using the wardens somehow. But if we don't have nether portal loading, so we can't just capture some wardens at the shrieker setup over there. We actually need to bring them over to the spawn chunks. So this is the area around where we yeah, started the world. So we could put them in a corner for example. But that would mean we need to transport the wardens over a couple thousand blocks. While we also need to make sure that they don't despawn. Um, so this is some stuff I definitely want to try and create it first. To see if it's actually working. So the first thing I want to work on is going to be the actual mob switch. We're going to need 70 wardens for this. Because this is a single player world. I'll also never use bots or anything like that. Because this is purely single player. Right, then we need... Definitely a possibility to turn this on or off. We need to move the wardens outside of the spawn chunks again, yeah, in case we want to use a mob farm. So right now they will be inside of the spawn chunks. I can also show this, I think, yeah, uh, with mini hut. And if we want to turn it off, we need to move the wardens outside of this chunk again. 
Since we don't have pistons right now, we can't put the uh, wardens in boats and minecarts as well. I think there's not a lot of options to move them. I think water should be pretty good. But yeah, if you use this setup, 70 wardens, they would at some point like block each other, so this would be too small, too many wardens. And some of them would then remain behind inside of the spawn chunks. Um, so we could either make this a lot larger, or we try something else. I was thinking maybe we actually flush them down into a gap. But how do we get them up? So I wanted to see if the warden actually floats up. Some yeah, mobs like villagers float up in water. Some like zombies sink down. What does the warden do? Floats up. Okay, this is good. Mm, I think this could work quite well. Could flush the warden over like this. Then he would drop down. Oh, he would take fall damage. Maybe we need to use something like hay bales. Or in the worst case, even powder snow. Carpets on top. Yeah, anyway, now we want to move the warden back over. Then we could just open those trapdoors and uh, flush the warden back over to the other side. And this should definitely allow us to have like multiple wardens. Uh, falling into the gap. Um, we could also try that. Let's maybe put three or four in there. Let's see if they would all fall into that hole. They should, I mean. Yeah, that's what they go. Okay. Then we could do the same on the other side, of course. Okay, one more thing I want to actually test. Um, is hay bales enough? It reduces fall damage. Does it actually negate it? Nope. Hmm, technically we could also use waterlocked blocks. I was thinking... Maybe a chest that is waterlocked. That's kind of cheap. Uh, let's get him out there real quick. Try it with the water bucket. There we go. And I flushed them back over. They do jump up, but it's actually a, actually a really good thing. <laughs> because there's also one thing we need to be aware of, that the wardens tend to despawn. So I definitely don't want to use set like 70 name tags on those guys. Um, if you keep them busy, they also won't despawn. Maybe this is actually really good to have waterlock chests there. Let's see what happens if we have 70 wardens in there. Couple more. Oh, entity cramming. Ah, okay. Seems like they tend to push each other to one of the sides. But it's really unfortunate. Yep. You know, we got 50 left. Okay, entity cramming is definitely an issue. Um, what are we gonna do? Might be a little bit hard to actually put them into ladders or vines to prevent the entity cramming. We could maybe just have like two of those chambers next to each other. That would be the other option. Uh, that's probably best, like having 47 in there, no problem. Just the other question is, would they actually despawn? Uh, let's do a quick tick warp. Still 47. Oh, they actually disappeared. Yep, that's also an issue. So now we have 36 in each chamber. And the only ones that actually despawned were the ones that were yeah, in the middle between both ends. So now we don't have any entity cramming issues. And it seems like they don't despawn. You can also try to go up again. Still 74 in total. Yeah, it seems like that's fine. Okay. So in order to switch in between um, mob switch on or off, yeah, in like a safe distance, we can just remove the torch and then they get flushed over. Still 74, let's try that again. Other side, yeah. Yeah, it's looking really promising. What's gonna be an issue though, is transporting the warden towards the mob switch. Next trigger, over a thousand blocks away. And if you just have a water stream like this, eventually the warden will despawn. So if we do a tick pop again, 
after about two minutes or so. Yeah, he's just gone. And I don't have a good idea what to do that doesn't require a lot of effort. Definitely using probably like a, a no block we trigger to deal with it. Mm, yeah, let's maybe try it real quick. Just need some sort of redstone clock to spam this. I guess the easiest would be this one here. Oh yeah, also we need three torches. Yep. Put the warden in. Is that enough? Of course, then as a downside, you actually try to path and towards that. But that should do the trick. Okay. Now it's just a question, if you do this, in what distance do we need the note blocks? So I'm guessing I'm gonna just try it out. Make a 200 meter long one and then maybe try to put the note blocks every 20 blocks, every 50 blocks and so on. So I did some testing, it seems like spamming a note block every 90 blocks is enough to prevent them from despawning. So let's try that again. I'm gonna go in spectator mode because I noticed and you have a lot of bats spawning around as a mob spawning that also keeps the warden alive. Okay, let's just run this a bit quicker. Actually it doesn't get affected too much by the note block. It tries to path hand towards it, but the uh, current is just stronger. Okay, that seems to work fine. There's the, no the last note block. I was gonna show you how far he gets approximately if you don't refresh it. The right around here, I think he's gonna despawn. Okay, I think 90 blocks roughly is as far as it gets. Okay, interesting, we have some mobs spawning here. That means some of the wardens actually despawn in this setup. I guess there's a problem with unloading it. Right, but I'm pretty sure if we just also add a note block that we spam, those guys also shouldn't disappear. Let's see if it works. Seems like we solved the issue of the despawning if we add a no block here. But now we have an entity cramming issue again because they try to path and all towards the middle. We have a no block on each side maybe. Prevent that. Or maybe let's try that. I don't want it to be any larger. Of course we could also just prevent the entity cramming if you have like three chambers. Or 24 in each that would also of course also work. So we have 20 wardens in each chamber now. Additionally, we refresh them with a note block. I think this should be as safe as it gets. Right, let's build this in survival. Okay, so we're back in survival. I'll definitely have to build the mob switch towards the coordinate direction west or to the left here um, of the spawn chunks because I think I can show that, yeah, so more or less in this corner there. So if we would build it on the other side, which is closer, of course, to the Shrieker, then um, the mob farms wouldn't work anymore because we would load the mob switch ourselves each time. So we need to bring them actually to the other end of the spawn chunks. So the <laughs> transport line needs to be even longer. And I just checked, kind of out of prismarine building blocks. And to be honest, I'm getting sick and tired of our current guardian farm. I don't even want to upgrade it. I checked there is, uh, I think, only like 200 meters to the right, another ocean monument, which you can use for a new one. Um, this had a couple of flaws. The new one would fix all of that and would be like three times as fast. So I can also you now use multiple hoppers. It's still uh, quite expensive for me to use them, but it's okay now. We can definitely use more than one. So I'd build a quick new guardian farm first, and then we can work on the warden stuff. So of course I need building the blocks for the new guardian farm and I went to the old guardian farm again and AFK'd for two hours. So I've done this probably already like 10 times until all the chests are filled and it's getting really tedious that I have to like interrupt and yeah, <laughs> wait for materials again. That's why I definitely want a faster guardian farm now. I think it's actually time. So the new form actually will be a little bit smaller, won't be a lot of effort, just had to probably AFK for one last time. Also at this point I don't even pick up the, the crystals, fish and insects anymore, because we already have yeah, a lot of chests filled with that stuff anyway, so just after the shards. Okay, um, but I definitely want to keep the old farm because it's good. Uh, the new farm won't farm insects so i'll build it below by 50 it's just going to be way faster so like 30,000 items per hour compared to well 
it's 9,000 items per hour here. And then there's a lot of yeah, insects anyway. And also we get raw caught from the dolphins that die. Um, so a new farm is probably going to be like four times faster. Just going to help a lot getting the building blocks. It was getting really late, so I decided to call it a day and went to the AFK platform again in the hopes of getting more wandering traders. So we actually have three more wandering traders. Let's see what we got this time. Right, first one. Oh, a jungle sapling. Yep, I'll definitely take that. Then brown mushroom. We also don't have that one yet. That's a new one. Moss blocks. <laughs> oh, I was really waiting for those. Okay, we even get two. Nice. Is there any point getting more? No. Two, two is fine. Okay, apart from that, the high we can get ourselves. And again, pack dies. Once we have silk touch, we can get yeah all the eyes we want. Okay, so next one. Let's see. Uh, coral block, tulip, cornflower, pumpkin, magenta dye, and pot soul. Right? That's actually really good. Um, let's actually check the last guy first. I would actually buy all the pot soul he has otherwise. Oh, that one also has pot soul? <gasps> Oak saplings! Oh my god! This is actually so good. <laughs> Finally! Okay, so we can get apples now. And even dark oak saplings! Oh, that's actually also nice. Um, I'd need to buy four dark oak saplings though. That means we hardly have any emeralds left for, for pot soul. It's a question of should I get the dark oak saplings or would... Would Potzel help us out more? We could probably think like buy it like eight or twelve times. But with the emeralds you can buy it eight times, this would be twenty-four more Potzel. So what's the current situation now? This actually ah, oh, this is actually tempting. But on the other hand, we're not too far away from getting renewable dirt. All we need is stone really. And then we can convert the moss. Or we can get more moss in the first place with the, the stone. Hmm, what to do? I think I, I'm gonna go for the dark oak saplings. Who knows how long it's gonna take until we get a warning trader selling those again. I guess that's probably the reasonable choice. Um, yeah. Okay. And we can still buy a little bit of pot so. Okay, out of emeralds. I think we did the best here with this setup. Okay, super happy, so yeah. Apples, finally.
All right, the new garden farm has been built. It was actually a, more like 500 blocks to the right of the first one. And it's actually a little bit smaller, but nevertheless, much faster. So it didn't take long to build this up. Maybe it was roughly a bit over half an hour. Most work yesterday when I was streaming actually went into making a fast travel tunnel towards the new guardian farm. So this directly links the first fast travel tunnel to the pig breeding area. Uh, and it's about I think, 13 or 1400 blocks long. So a lot of building blocks went into this. And yeah, while building this really made me realize why building a new guardian farm. Because of the old one, it was really getting annoying, um, AFKing all the time and not getting a uh, sufficient amount of building blocks. With the new one, it should be much better. All right, I'd say we actually take our chest boat and yeah, use the fast travel tunnel. So chest boat is also really good. Because obviously you can put even more items in it compared to, for example, a donkey. And I can travel at 40 meters per second. Okay, let's go. We need to take a left turn. There we go, no problem. And then we're in a new tunnel. So this yeah, is now roughly 1400 blocks. And it takes less than a minute to get there. I was again um, just using water there and froze it with the Frostwalker boots. And there we are already. Let's check out the farm real quick as well. So we made all of those improvements I was talking about the last time. So it's now built below Y51. So we don't have any fish and squid spawning in the higher layers. Which was especially detrimental because the guardians got distracted with the squid. Then we also have a full block roof on top instead of the slab roof. That also boosts the spawning rates. And the last thing is, this was pointed out to me by multiple people. There's a really nice trick how you can prevent those guardians from jumping. So the last block with the last layer of water is on top of stairs. And this, because I think they sink in a little bit at the end, this prevents them from jumping up. So them gliding into the drop chute is much smoother and takes less time. So I also have a 2x3 drop chute now. And since we have more iron now, I was able to afford using 12 hoppers. So I was really in a iron spending mood yesterday. Spent 60 iron just on hoppers here. And as you can see in my inventory, I also have iron tools now. I was convinced on stream that I should actually use it. Still not entirely sure if it's really worth it right now. Uh, because it takes me like 3 minutes to farm 3 iron ingots. So does it really save me like 3 minutes uh, if I have a iron pickaxe compared to a wooden one? Not entirely sure. But it's definitely much more fun if I actually have to mine a couple blocks so that it goes quicker. So this farm produces about 30,000 items per hour now. Which is, well, considering that we don't get any squid ink clogging up the hopper, I think it's like 4 times as fast when it comes to getting the prismarine shards, which are mostly after. And we have uh, four times as large storage with 12 double chests. But I've been AFKing. Sorry, filled up again. I also spent... Oh my god, there was a diamond zombie. No, and he got killed by entity crabbing. I can't believe this. Ah, uh, <laughs> okay. Is this a mango lock? <laughs> I don't know, it feels like it. Anyway, so I spent like 25 more iron on 5 hoppers here for the mob farm. I think there's definitely improvements, so some of the items would not be collected by chests. Usually my inventory is getting completely filled anyway, and now I don't need to empty it as often anymore. So this is definitely an improvement. So basically I spent 90 iron um, yesterday on hoppers and iron tools. Let's check out our reserves. So I always keep... 31 iron ingots to replace the anvil, which at this point is actually no longer a chipped anvil, it's a damaged anvil. So it could break any moment. And then we basically only got 29 iron ingots left. Um, but there's also... Oh yeah, <laughs> those records I got yesterday. So I'm supposed to not sneak around the farm here, because if I do that, then the mobs can see me. And I had to place down those chests and it's required some sneaking to place a chest against another chest. You get a double chest and the skeletons started shooting some of the creepers. And that's how I got those records. Um, but I was about to say, so we've got 29 iron left. But there's also another really good thing that happened yesterday on stream. 
I finally got a silk touch shovel. Took literally forever, but we finally have it. Um, so this means we can do a couple more interesting things, like move a skulk sensor, uh, move turtle eggs, um, move bee, a beehive. So we could actually get into bees as well. We have the birch sapling. So there's definitely a lot of new options now that we have the, the silk touch shovel. Um, yeah, at this point also, I don't think there's any more reason to really farm zombies. I've done it a lot in the hopes of getting that silk touch shovel and initially getting that looting sword. Still looting too, by the way. Um, but apart from that, I think if we are farming mobs at this point, it's no longer really about the iron. It's, I mean, diamond is kind of nice, but it's not a huge improvement over the chain mail. Um, so I pretty much got everything I wanted from, from farming the mobs now. Also got the advancement for the silk touch shovel. Finally, get a silk touch tool so you can move grass blocks easier. Easier than Enderman. I don't think I agree that it's actually easier than Enderman because I had to kill like, what was it? Yeah, over 30,000 zombies to get the silk touch shovel. <laughs> it was definitely a lot of work. Okay, um, so we have 78 durability left on it. I'm just gonna combine it with some. Yeah, we've got a lot of unbreaking and efficiency shovels. Maybe we can make efficiency 5 unbreaking 3 silk touch shovel out of this. So let's see if the anvil can combine this. So I can combine 8 shovels to get the perfect shovel pretty much. So here we got efficiency 2 4 times. So this should give us efficiency 4 in the end. There goes the anvil. Yeah, as expected, already got the iron ready. Now we're really low on iron. Okay, um, let's combine efficiency three ones. Then we got unbreaking three as well. Then we can combine efficiency three and silk touch. Not this way. Get efficiency four. Uh, and then just we can combine it further. It's also a point. Oh, doing it this way, definitely better. There we go. Fish C5, Silk Touch, and Unbreaking. Right, so I probably should farm a little bit more iron again, so I at least have like 31. But apart from that, uh, we definitely should try to get villagers soon, so we can make an iron farm. Now that we have the oak sapling and the pigs, we're really close to it. Um, so now it's actually really late in this episode already. Don't think I'm gonna start yeah, with the mob switch in this one. Definitely that's what we're gonna do first thing in the next episode and then I guess we're gonna you know, go back to pig breeding. But also I could get really distracted now. Now we have a lot of more options with the silk touch tool. So I could start bee breeding or getting bees in the first place. A lot of options now. Hopefully it won't get too distracted again anymore. Okay, so that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye guys!